Hey everyone, I'm Luke from WeldPro, and today we're here to talk about pulse welding with the brand new TIG 250 GD. Pulse is one of the features that you're going to find standard on the TIG welders from WeldPro. To better illustrate how Pulse works, we're going to be welding on aluminum test coupons today. We're going to use the Pulse on aluminum to show how to give the stacked dime effect while running an aluminum weld. Using Pulse can come in really handy when you're working on something that's a little thinner and you need to control your heat input. When in pulse mode, the machine will automatically adjust your current from a base amperage to a peak amperage back and forth based on a preset frequency. Before we dive into the welding, let's go ahead and get the menu set up correctly for pulse. Begin by energizing the TIG 250. There's a button in the top left corner of the display that will allow you to switch from stick mode to TIG mode. For our purposes, we're going to be using the 2T trigger option. There's also a button in the bottom center of the display to switch from standard welding mode to pulse. Because we're welding aluminum today, we want to make sure we're in AC welding mode. Next, we're going to walk through the entire menu and set it up. Begin by pressing the leftmost menu button to enter the menu. We'll start on our preflow setting. This is up to you, but I prefer a 0.6. Using the right hand menu button, advance to the next option, which is starting amps. For AC welding, the starting amp minimum will be 10 amps. This is indicated on the display. Your next setting will be upslope. The upslope is referenced in seconds, but for our purposes, we're not going to use upslope or downslope. The peak amperage is your next adjustment. This will be the highest amperage that the machine outputs during the pulse cycle. The next setting will be your peak on time. Peak on time is represented in a percentage and can be adjusted based on user preference. Hitting the right menu button again will take you to the pulse frequency. Pulse frequency is represented in Hertz and can be adjusted to control the rate of the pulse cycle. Hertz is cycles per second, so something like 30 Hertz would be an extremely fast pulse rate. The final adjustment in the pulse section will be the base amperage adjustment. This is represented in a percentage of your peak amperage and can be adjusted based on preference. I'm going to set this at 10% and see what happens. The next setting in the menu is AC frequency. I find this runs really well at 60 Hz. Also, it's important that we set our AC balance. This is represented by a percentage of cleaning action, so we're going to set it at 30% to get 70% penetration. The next adjustment will be our downslope. Be sure this is set to zero. The ending amperage is the final current output that occurs when our pedal is down to its minimum point. And finally, we'll adjust our post flow. I prefer to have something like 6 seconds to give adequate gas coverage to ensure there is no contamination. Now that our menu is set up, let's go ahead and give our first pass a try. Begin by establishing your arc as you normally would. In the beginning, it takes plenty of preheat to establish a puddle on aluminum. Use the cleaning action of the arc to your advantage to clean a little area to establish the weld pool, but also to preheat the material. Once you see the puddle beginning to develop, add filler material. At first, the puddle will be cold, so you'll need to go slow and work the puddle around. As your weld progresses, you'll be able to add filler in a consistent pattern and speed. You can use the sound of the pulse to develop a rhythm of adding filler material. When you get to the end of your weld, don't forget to add a couple extra drops of filler. This weld came out looking good, and you can see the defined bead appearance because of the pulse. Don't forget that practice makes perfect. Based on the outcome of this weld, you can see the immediate difference that pulse has on bead appearance. Before running our next pass, I'm going to make an adjustment to our pulse frequency. In fact, I'm going to turn it all the way down to 1 Hz, which is one cycle per second. This will significantly change the pulse rate, but it will be neat to experiment and see how it looks. Immediately when you start the arc, you'll notice the drastic difference that slowing down the pulse frequency makes. In this pass, I'm going to use it to my advantage. Each time that the pulse hits the peak amperage, I'm going to add my filler material. This will allow the puddle to cool each time, develop a new puddle, and then I can add my filler material. 
At the end of this weld, it should give that stacked dime effect that we look for with aluminum. Don't forget when ending your weld to add a little extra filler to prevent crater cracking. This is especially important with aluminum. Right away we can see the defined bead appearance. It looks very clean and we can tell each time that we added filler material. Keep on practicing and trying different frequencies. There are lots of different things pulse can be useful for. Hopefully this video has given you a little insight into pulse welding, how to set it up, and what to look for when you are running a pass. Don't be afraid to experiment with the settings. You might accidentally stumble into something you really, really like. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you haven't done so already, hit the like button and the subscribe button under this video. Make sure to enable your notifications. That way you'll be alerted the minute we release the latest content. From all of us here at Weld Pro, we can't wait to see what you build with your brand new TIG 250.